Hi, it's Ryan from Knights Around a Table, and you're probably wondering, Ryan, where's the game? Well, the game is so small you can barely see it. It's right here, and it's called Ultra Tiny Epic Galaxies. That's right, Ultra Tiny Epic Galaxies, not to be confused with Tiny Epic Galaxies, which is merely... Oh, yeah, that's the expansion. That is the base game, Tiny Epic Galaxies, which is merely tiny. Uh, and it's uh, such a great format. If you watch the channel a lot, you know that I uh, adore this game. I think it's great. And I love that it packs such a big experience into such a little box, which is the hallmark of the whole Tiny Epic series. But they decided to take a couple of the more popular ones from the series and make them into even smaller, ridiculously small versions. So Ultra Tiny Gal Epic Galaxies is about the size of a standard deck of cards, which is pretty crazy. And I've wanted this badly for a long time, but I find it hard to justify spending money on a game that I already own, right? So I own the now gigantic Epic Galaxies in comparison. So I thought I couldn't do it, but then recently uh, I made a purchase from my friendly local game store and they have a shipping limit and you gotta get up to a certain amount in order for them to ship for free. And I was just 15 bucks off. And this little guy is 15 bucks up here in Canada land. So I thought, ah, oh, perfect. It's the opportunity I've been waiting for to finally get my hands on this. So uh, I wanted to crack it open and compare it with the uh, now forward, you know, the gigantic Epic Galaxies box that I, I already own. Now, I, I brought this out mistakenly at the beginning, but I, I think it is a little bit of a bummer that I own the base game and the expansion, but the ultra tiny format is only, uh, only contains the components that are in the base game. Interestingly though, I will note that when I bought this version, there was a little seal on it that said it was the deluxe version. And I didn't know what that meant at the time. If you go back and watch my unboxing, you'll see a look of confusion on my face, which I so often have. But the deal was the, the base game, there's a retail version. And then with Kickstarter, they had a little mini expansion. They do this with, I think, a lot of, if not all of their games. So that if you buy it on Kickstarter, there's a little bit of an incentive to buy it there. And then if you buy it retail, they actually split out the, um, the little promo or the little expansion, and you can buy that separately from a store like the Board Game Geek store. So I had the deluxe version, which came with the satellites and super weapons expansion. What's cool about Ultra Tiny Epic Galaxies is not only is this whole base game in there, but I feel like I sound like such a shill. I honestly, these these guys didn't send this to me. I bought this with my own money, and I honestly quite like this game, uh, genuinely, naturally. But Satellites and Super Weapons, which you can only get with the deluxe version or buying this game on Kickstarter, is included in Ultra Tiny Epic Galaxies. How cool is that? Answer, very cool. Kind of sucks though that, that the expansion isn't available yet because I quite like the expansion, but hey, we'll take what we can get and we'll crack this open and see what is inside. So I zoomed my camera in a little bit. It might be a little bit grainy. I don't have a craft knife, so I have to <laughs> I have to open this with my second favorite board game opening tool, a teeth. Oh man, so excited about this. Um, I want to see how itty bitty everything is. Okay. So, and I want to know if they have, like, do they have, to do they, is, is the solo mode in here? That's what I'm most curious about, I think, is the solo mode in. Here we go. So I'm opening it up. And there's a bundle of wood right there in a bag that it is resealable. I was gonna say, I would be worried if that just kind of like rattled around in the box. So you get a little bag and you get a deck of cards. Probably it's very thin and I'm bad at estimating, but there's probably only about 50,000 cards in there. And so those are gonna be all the player mats. And oh look, it's got Rogue Galaxies on the background. So indeed, the single player mode of this game is, is on these cards. That's kind of cool. And then an instruction booklet that's almost thicker than that batch of cards itself. But I already know how to play. If you don't know how to play, uh, here's me actually being a shill. You can go watch my How to Play Tiny Epic Galaxies video, which I worked so hard on just for you. And this, I'm surprised that the cards in the game, so the player mat cards are as big, but the planet cards look like they're in this teensy tiny little deck. All right, so we gotta get stuff out of the main box to compare the sizes of things before we go hog wild and open everything. So here is the main game. Uh, let's shove all this up here. To compare, this is a standard, what is it, three by four inch deck of cards, three and a half, three and a quarter, I don't even know. And so that's the size of it. It's 
adorably small. Those are the planet cards. And then the cubes, the player tokens and cubes, you know what, maybe I should take like one of them out. And I'll probably have to put this on the, the old close up Camaro so you can see. So instead of doing a nice uh, machined meeple for the ship, so that's an original ship. Here, let's put it up here. Woo, are we working? Are we functional? Yes, we are. Last time I did a video with that close-up cam, I had major slowdown. It looks like some major slowdowns happening there. So my apologies if, it's, if we've dropped to two frames a second. And we're not in focus either. <laughs> yeah, back that up. Nope, going closer. It doesn't matter. It's still fuzzy and out of focus, but the whole point is that you can see the size comparison. And the, the original ship is gigantic compared to the cube with the screen ship on it. But that's, that's what we're looking at. And... These satellites, I wonder if I have, yes I do. So this is an original satellite. It's a wooden dowel disc shape and they put everything on cubes. So this is an ultra tiny epic galaxy. And the size, actually interestingly, <laughs> the satellite in ultra tiny epic galaxies is kind of like bigger, which is shocking. You know, it's a cube versus a thin cylinder. I wonder by volume, which one has the edge? Doesn't really matter, and I suppose if you like the circular shape, maybe you can use your original satellites if you've got those. Great. Uh, what else should we do here? Let's let's pop open this whole bag of wood and see everything. So I, I think it's just all cubes. Yeah, so every piece is a cube, whereas in the base game, if we were to compare, your you've got a one, two, three, four, five, six, and you've got a hexagonal uh, dowel to note your progress, your, your civiliz space civilization's progress. But in ultra tiny epic galaxies, it's gonna be a cube presumably with that symbol silk screened on it. There's energy, there is, I cannot find you. Hello? Uh, you're blank? No, you're not, there it is. So yeah, the shapes of things are silk screened on. Neato. And we'll open this by guy up and compare. Now, one of the cool things about the expansion that I actually usually, I don't know, it depends on, on the game. Sometimes I keep my expansions separate in their own box. And if there's enough room, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll put the expansion stuff in the base game box. But one of the nicest things about the expansion is it has this card, which is a score tracker which I keep in the main game box because there's no reason not to use that when you play this game. It's much nicer. Love it. Uh, so here, do we have a score tracker? We have player cards for, this is a five, it, this is, a, it's a five player game in this size box. That's crazy. For those of you who play cards, you're like, yeah, so what? But no, this is something special for board games, I gotta tell you. Uh, back to here, so here are the five player mats, and here's just a, like a player card reminding you of the dice actions. Rogue Galaxy, and in the, in the main game, I'm gonna compare. Woo, I'm gonna get the pieces mixed up, I know it. In the base game to compare, here are the size comparisons of the player mats. So you don't have as much, you know, the graphic design isn't as nice because in the base game, you've got these really nice arcs that you can move your tokens up, depending on what's happening in the game. You've got this nice swirl. So that's gonna be a better feeling for sure. And here, you're just like, duck, 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 it's all squares, everything's cubes, you know, but, but, I mean, it's the size of a deck of cards. It's the size of a deck of cards, that's still pretty cool. Then on the back, there is, every player card has a robot on the back that you can fight against if you're playing solo. And it looks like they carried that through to the tiny versions. Really neat. The last thing I'll get into are these planet cards. Get into them with my, with my primitive canines. Ah, ah, take that plastic. You're scrumptious. It's not really delicious at all. Go. Great, 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 great. Uh, plastic everywhere, plastic and hair. Okay, I don't know if you can see those hairs. Uh, oh, interesting. All oh, right, so these are the gold cards. Everyone gets dealt 
one or two. I don't know. I'll have to watch my own video. Uh, I dare not put these on the on the close up cam because we. I, I think the close up cam is is misbehaving right now. Um, those are they. And then to compare the planet cards. I love this tape, by the way. If you haven't discovered this tape, my, my friend Doc clued me into this tape, which is a great way to, it's self-adhesive vinyl tape, which is a great way to keep cards bound together if you don't have a deck box for them or something. So let's bust out like a planet card out of here and compare. So perfect, both of these planets have a two space track on them. There's the start, there's the finish. Now it looks like it would be a little small, right? If you had if you had these cubes and you had two or more people racing, I guess you kind of have to stack the cubes up. Not that this is a ship, but let's pretend it's a ship. So you would do that. And if you had all five players sort of vying for control of this planet, it does get a little bit fiddly and ridiculous. Yeah. But it's the size of a deck of cards. Um, it's got the power on here. I wonder if they had to actually reduce any of the text on the cards describing the powers because those are pretty small. Also, I wonder what happens when we get into a, a planet that has, you know, like four spaces on the track or five spaces. Let's see if we dig out one of those from this deck. Da 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 do 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 one one one. I wonder if the game's being modified to, in order to accommodate that. Let's see. One, two, one, two, one, two. I don't see any fivers in here. There's a three. One, two, three spaces. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Oh, here we go. Here's some of the bigger ones. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four, five. That's how they did it. So yeah, feel-wise, it looks a little bit different. It looks uh, you know, sort of necessarily cuby to accommodate these cubes. And on the player mats, it's very cuby, da da da. So you don't get those nice swoops and arcs. So it might not feel as nice to play, but it fits, I might have mentioned, in the box that is the size of a deck of cards. So this is one of the things that actually got the base game played a whole lot in my in my house sort of I shouldn't say in my household I should say out of my household it was I was able to take this um, all over the place I would take it uh, to holiday parties where everyone would hate my guts for busting on a board game because nobody else likes to play and I would you know take it on outings and things and people are like you know Ryan why are you taking that it's a grandma's funeral can you please pay attention um, but I, I still think that the form factor is you know one of the biggest things going for this game so to have it reduced even further and I can fit it in my big Canadian winter coat parka pocket that's pretty that's pretty exciting i'm still pretty excited about this i'm jazzed it's a dice rolling game so i would be remiss if i didn't actually find the dice and roll them I'm shooting this after i just finished shooting this video and i'm cutting it in because i forgot all about it here we go these are the dice one of the three four five six and they're dark so if you know this game it's kind of like a like a space yahtzee and you roll the dice and then you get to keep any number and then re-roll the ones you didn't want to keep. And if you're like, okay, those two are good. And so I want to keep these ones and roll this. If you played Yahtzee, if you played the King of Tokyo, it's the same kind of rules for rolling the dice. And then you line them all up on the card and you know activate the ones that you've activated and people can actually one of the coolest things about the game is that people can follow one of your actions if they have any energy left and so uh, when it brags about decreasing downtime in the game it's actually not whistling dixie because now you actually have to pay attention to what other people are doing if you've got energy to spend or something you want to do and it's not your turn you can blow that energy and copy one of the dice that they actually activate one of the coolest things about the game uh, do you own this did you decide not to buy it because like me you own the base game you think maybe it's a waste of time and money or or are you just sort of like curious about it like I have been for the longest time and then you finally bit the bullet? I want to know. Looks fiddly as heck. It really does. And one of the games in the series, Tiny Epic Quest, which I have wanted to cover on the channel for a while. I couldn't quite get around to it because it's not my absolute favorite game because of the fiddliness. I, this is the, the one that introduced item meeples, where you got meeples with little hexagonal holes in the, where their hands would be, and you can put, you can equip them with little weapons and things. It was the first one they did that on, and it seems like a cool idea until you actually get the thing out, and then you're playing like a teensy game of like operation, trying to fit these little plastic pieces into the meeples, and it's, uh, you know, it's a fiddly. Fiddly is the best word to describe it. Me, this looks like it could be dangerously fiddly and one strong gust of wind if you break this out you know on the on the Lido deck of a cruise ship and that there goes your game I don't know you tell me 
like it, don't like it, comment on it. Please leave a comment below and we'll catch you next time. Thank you so much for watching this one. Did you just watch that whole thing? Oh, hey, to 100% this video, click the badge to subscribe and then click the bell to get notifications when I've got new stuff.